Robot Renegades, Python Peeps, and MQTT Masterminds. This is Prof G, and in this CircuitPython School video, I'm going to show you how you can use the free Meal Maskeris iOS app that you can find in the App Store to control the robot that we built in the prior videos, and I'll show you how you can modify the CircuitPython code running on your Pi to do whatever you want, play sound, control motors, or just about anything else you can do in Python when triggered from a press in the app. Let's roll! So here's a quick look at the app used to control the Raspberry Pi CircuitPython Cricket Bot that we built in earlier videos. This is the robot that my students build in their physical computing course. Now the arrow keys move the robot forward, backward, left, and right. As long as a finger is down on a key, the bot moves. Lift a finger and the bot stops. Tap on an entry in the scrolling list and it will play a sound. And although I haven't updated the app with the name specific to the sounds, I'll show you how you can not only change the sounds and update the descriptions in the app, but also how you can alter the CircuitPython Mosquito client code that runs on the Pi so that you can write your own commands to respond to app presses. Look at you making things. Now you can find Meal Mascaris in the iOS App Store. Just search for Meal Mascaris. This is the Mexican luchador that the app is named after. It was originally developed to distribute PPE masks during COVID. Meal Mascaris is the wrestler that's the man of a thousand masks. Meal Mascaris in Spanish means thousand masks. And you can search on an iPhone or an iPad or an iPod Touch. You can see this is what the app looks like on an iPhone. This is what it looks like on an iPad. Now the app has phrases that show up as defaults that don't apply to my class's robot build, and the host name is likely different than the name of your Pi, so let me show you how we can change these. Just click on the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. Now apologies, the app at this point isn't very polished. I've pulled this together as quickly as possible, so you'll see this alert show up every time you return to the screen. I'm going to fix this at some point, but for now you can just click OK. I'm going to show you what these instructions mean. So first, let's change the host name to our Pi's name. So click the Change button, and then I'll highlight Meal Mascaris, delete that, and over the top of this I'll type in the host name of my Raspberry Pi. Mine happens to be Prof G Pi. Then click the Save button, and this should be saved to your app, and it should stay in the app on this device as long as you don't delete the app and reinstall it. If you delete the app and reinstall it, then all of the defaults will show up, and you'll lose any changes that you've made. Next, this list down here shows all of the sounds that are played. Now the names of the sounds must start with 0.mp3, and the name of each subsequent sound is increased by 1. They'll always show up in numerical order, but let's change the description for 0.mp3, because if you're using the robot underscore sounds folder for this app that we installed in the previous video, this sound says, bro, that's totally cool. So let's change the description, just click on this item, and on this page you can edit the description and click save. Now as I record this, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, that's why if you listen to the sound in your robot sounds folder, 2.mp3 is a turkey gobbling. So I'm going to click on the entry for 2.mp3, so it's very fun to chase the cats around the house with a gobbling robot, or have the cats chase the gobbling robot, whichever your felines prefer. <laughs> And then I'm also going to scroll down here, and you might recall from the video that the last item that I tapped said, You Go Girl. However, I'm going to purposely get this wrong, and hopefully this will help illustrate how the app works with sounds on your Pi, and I'll show you how you can change those sounds up and add new sounds. So to underscore how things are working, let's look at the folder on our Raspberry Pi where our sounds are stored. If I go to the Prof G Pi volume, this is my Raspberry Pi. Remember, we learned how to set this up with Finder integration in an earlier tutorial. And once you're in your Pi, inside of the Pi user's home folder, we can see under the robot underscore sounds folder, remember we copied that over in the prior video, and we can see these sounds are labeled 0.mp3 through 12.mp3. Startup.wave is the ready to roll sound that plays when the bot starts. So now that we're configured, I'm going to click on the back button to get to the control screen, and that's the first screen that shows up when your app starts, and once you've set up your app and sounds the way you want them, you likely don't need to configure this again unless you're changing the sounds or changing your Raspberry Pi's host name. Then, with your robot on, your Cricut powered, and your speakers on and powered, I'm going to first click on Connect to Robot, and you'll want to do that the first time that you show up in the app, every time you launch the app. And now, you should be able to click any of the sounds or press the direction buttons to control your Pi. So I'm going to click the first entry, and that plays 0.mp3. Bro, that's totally cool. And that's what we're expecting. How about the second entry? Go set the world aflame. So 1.mp3 is set the world aflame. That's something they say at Jesuit universities. Boston College is a Jesuit university, and that's where I teach. Now, if you wanted a different sound, you could just rename that sound 1.mp3 and copy it over into your robot sounds folder, replacing the existing 1.mp3. And you can also replace the description in the app as well if you'd like. And if you're a Mac user and you want to quickly play any of these sounds to see how they sound, you could just right click on them and select Quick Look. Go set the world aflame. 
that'll play through your Mac speakers, not your Pi speaker, because you're playing using the quick look function, which is on your Mac. So I'm going to head back to the app and press gobble. <laughs> and we get a gobble. But if I press the last entry, it's not you go, girl. Hey there. Want some candy? Reach in and grab a snack. Now in class, I actually put a basket in the front of my robot and use it to distribute candy, so that's why I've got that sound. But what we wanted for the last item was you go, girl. Well, if I quick look in the file 11.mp3... You go, girl. I can hear that's actually the sound I wanted. Now our app doesn't yet have 12 sound entries. Remember, sound 11.mp3 is our 12th sound because we start with 0.mp3. What about sound 10? Watch out. I'm on a roll. Watch out. Okay, so we can add that one too. So let's add two more sounds and get these in the right order, and the app's configuration screen will let us do that too. So to change our app so that it matches any sound on our Raspberry Pi, we can click the gear icon. And then to add a sound, click the plus icon in the lower right hand corner. Now this brings up a screen where you add the description for the sound that we're adding. I'm going to enter want some candy, then click save. Now this sound was added to the end as sound 10, but I'll show you how we can reorder sounds in just a minute. But first, let's click on the plus icon one more time because we want to add another sound description for watch out, I'm on a roll. That's another description that we don't have yet. And I'll click on save. And then back on this configuration screen in the app, click the Move Delete button. Now, if you wanted to completely delete any entry, you could click on the minus sign next to the entry, or you could swipe left. But I want to reorder sounds because You Go Girl is actually sound 11, not sound 9. Well, what I can do is just click the little gray lines to the right of the entry for You Go Girl, drag it down to the location where I want this, right at the end, release, and we see that the entry is now associated with 11.mp3, which is exactly what we wanted. And we've also correctly renumbered 9.mp3 to want some candy, and 10.mp3 to watch out, I'm on a roll. So when you're done, you can click done, go back to the main screen, and try this out. You go, girl. Watch out, I'm on a roll. Hey there, want some candy? Reach in and grab a snack. Perfect! That's what we wanted. So hopefully now you know how you can change sounds on your Pi and change your app with the appropriate descriptions. And now what if you wanted to change what the app button presses and the presses on the items in the list do entirely? Well, we would do that in the control pybotpy CircuitPython program that we added in the last tutorial. Let's briefly look at this code, and you can explore this more on your own if you'd like. And I'll show you this code in the terminal window because the colors make the code easier to read than in GitHub. And as we go through this code, we see first where you need to change the server address, which is what we did in the last tutorial. This is just the name of your Pi. And here is where we import the modules that we're using. If you're still using the Adafruit Cricut and DC Motors, this is where we set that up. You never need to change the client's name. This line connects you to the client, so you should need to change that. And this statement is just a flag that I use when printing. Now, if your robot veers to the right or the left, you can add a trim value to slow one of the wheels down. Now, these trim values are added to the left and right speeds below, so make sure your trim values are negative. You never want your speed to go greater than 1.0. That's the maximum speed for DC motors. Now, this value here turns down the speed to 50% so that we don't turn at full speed. Here's where we specify the directory for our audio files. That's robot underscore sounds. It's in our Pi's user directory. And here's where we work with Pygame to set up sound play. We load our startup.wave sound that's ready to roll, and we set our volume to 50%. You can set this to any number. 1.0 is the maximum volume. Then we play the startup sound. You won't need to change the connection function at all. This is a standard function for connecting to an MQTT broker. But the message decoder function is where we respond to messages sent by the publisher, and the publisher is our app. So if you wanted to change what your Pi does when it receives commands from the app, this is where you do it. Now currently when the user presses a direction button on the app, we start moving in that direction. And we continue to move in that direction until the user releases a finger from the direction button press. Now if the finger is lifted off the direction button, the app immediately sends a stop message. And this is where we cut the throttle to zero. Now you can see backward moves by negative values. Left and right move one wheel in the positive direction and the other wheel in the negative direction. Positive or negative depends on which direction we're rotating in. We also use slow turn by here. This is the value we initially set to 50% so that we perform our turns more slowly than when we're moving at full speed. Then this next block checks to see if a volume message was sent. Now if you look at the app, there's a slider. And if you move the slider, the app will publish a message that is VOL equal sign, followed by a value from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the number at the end. So this line here strips out the first four characters in the message. That's the VOL equal sign. So all that's left over is the number. We convert that to a floating point value, and we can use that to set the speaker volume. 
Now in this else statement, we're currently assuming that any other commands that are coming in must be from selections on our list. And currently what that's doing is it's playing music associated with whatever value was clicked. So we simply send a number that corresponds to the element in the list that was clicked, starting with zero, since our list is zero indexed. And here is where we play the music. Whatever the name of that MP3 file is, assuming all the files in our folder are named starting with 0.mp3. So you can see here, if we wanted to modify this app, you could write different descriptions for different values in this list, and then interpret them here to do things like light up LEDs, move different servo motors, or anything you'd like. Now these last few lines here don't need to be changed. These handle connections to the server, and you might also notice that this code uses a different standard than we're used to. So this code doesn't have a while true loop. We simply use this method here, which loops forever. But these two lines here handle integration with the connection status and the message decoder functions that we've written above. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how the code works and how you can get in here and change things if you wanted to make this your own. Now, if you make any changes to your code, you can re-execute this code from the prompt using the command python control pybotpy and Ready any code roll. that you save with that Let's name go. should execute automatically the next time you restart your Pi. So I hope you like this tutorial and I hope you enjoy the app. If you found this useful, please let me know with a like, a comment, and a subscribe. This helps me out a lot and keeps me motivated to create more content. Do tell others about the channel and good luck making something awesome.